Okay, uh, in this lesson, uh, we're going to take our kind of skeleton of our to-do list, which looks something like this. We've got uh, a label here, a label there, and we've got a text entry widget, we've got some buttons, and we've got a list box. And we want to take it, uh, first thing we want to do is we want to change the appearance a little bit. So this is what we want it to look like. So we want to get rid of the TK and change that. Uh, we want to change the width. You can see how it's a little bit larger. It's a little bit nicer. And uh, so we're going to be changing the uh, title. Uh, we're going to be changing the geometry, it's called. So that, that's a pretty simple thing. So let's do that real quick. Um, and then after that, we're going to talk about how to get our list data into our list box and how to clear the list box. That will be the first two things that we, we do here. Okay, so. Um, so I'm going to move that off to the side and close this for now. Okay, so basically what we got to do uh, is first uh, we want to change the root uh, window background color. Now here on my Mac it's uh, default to white which is good. Um, but if you're on a different system it might be different. So it's very easy to do. Just do root.configure Oops, configure and BG, which is background color, equals white. Okay. Now we want to now again on Mac there's no difference because it's it's by default white, but on other systems it is not. I know on Linux it is not. So now we want to change the title. So it's root dot title. So easy enough to remember, I hope. And I'm going to call it my super to do list. And the next thing is change the window size. Now I've played around with this already. I, I've, I've done this, so I know the numbers. And it's root geometry. That's what we're doing. It's 200 width by 500 height. So that's what I found was pretty good. So let's run that and make sure it's looking how we want it to. Okay, looks good. So we can't really see any difference between the one on the left, which uh, is our new one, and the one on the right, which is our finished example. Okay, so next thing's next. Um, so basically, what we need to do uh, this this we're going to be using a list to keep track of our data. So I'm going to go ahead and create an empty list. So I'm going to call it tasks, which kind of makes sense. And here is an empty list. Uh, now. For testing purposes, I want to start with my list already. Uh, use a you know a default list. So I'm going to say tasks equals. Oops. So I usually do call mom. Buy a guitar. These are things I like to do. Uh, and uh, eat uh, oops, eat uh, sushi. Can't go wrong with that. So now if I save it and I run it, okay, okay. Now we don't see it here, so we're going to learn how to update that list box because uh, that was our first function that we did. So let's close that. Actually, no, we didn't do that one yet. Uh, we did add a task. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to create a new function called update list box because we're going to be doing that all the time. You know, in our previous version of this program, if you did the uh, command line version. You know, basically we had to type P to uh, print the list, but we're going to be doing update list box. Um, so what we want to do is it's called populate the list box. So what we need to do is we've got a list of tasks. So for uh, task in tasks. Okay, so. So for each task, task 0, task 1, task 2, we need to list box task, that's the name of it. We're going to use the method called insert. And we want to insert uh, each task at the end. Okay, so when I say at the end, so in this case, this is the end. So if I add something, it will pop up here. So if I say, um, eat sushi. And I click add task. I don't want it added at the top. I want it added at the bottom. That's the end. You see how it appears there. And that's what 
this will do. It will go through this list, whatever order it's in, and add each item. Okay, so let's save that. Now, what I I need to be able to call this function. So what I'm going to do is when I add a task, I'm going to call update list box. Okay. So this is this is not finished, but this is just an example. So what we want to happen here is when I click the button add task, it goes to the function called add task. Inside the function add task it goes to update list box and populates the list box. Okay, so let's run it and see if that works. Okay, so I'm going to go add task. So there we go. So notice it's in the same order, call mom, buy guitar, eat sushi, as was in the task list. Now if I click that again, it keeps adding it over and over again. Okay, so we've got to fix that by before we add everything, we want to clear the list box. So that's fortunately pretty simple. Um, so we're going to create a function called clear list box. Okay. And it's very, very simple. We do list lb underscore task, because that's the name of our list box. Delete zero to the end. So what that will do is it will delete starting here at numbers, or number zero all the way to the end which was down here and it'll delete all of them for us. Okay, so that's that's our example. So let's go back to this one and then in the, when I update the list box I need to clear clear the current list by calling the function list box. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so I'm going to click add task. Okay, it pops up. If I click add task again, notice it's not adding it anymore because it's clearing it and then re-adding it. So it but so fast your eye doesn't see it. Okay. So that's I think that's all for this lesson. That's that's what we wanted to, to uh, get working. Uh, we basically wanted to be able to make our window look just a bit nicer, a little bit wider, uh, change the title, you can play around with the background color if you want, and then make sure that we are able to update our list box. And the, and the reason we did it this way was so that when we use all of these functions, we're not really going to be doing anything to the list box itself, we're only going to be working on the tasks list. Okay. And then we've already we already know how to do that um, if you're in my class at least and you've done the uh, the non GUI version from the command line you know how to manipulate a list so it's basically a, a case of okay manipulating the list and then updating the list box but we'll talk more about that in detail in next couple lessons.